Welcome to a very special episode of our unique Newcastle United podcast. Since the takeover of Newcastle United, we at this podcast have been bringing cultures together from the Middle East and the Northeast, as well as around the globe. Today's guest is a decorated man who's been doing that since the day he arrived on Tyneside. Welcome to Black and White with Arab News. Now, before we meet today's guest, it's a warm welcome to Ali Khalid, the sports editor of Arab News. Ali, it's certainly a landmark episode today, and Newcastle United are officially safe. Yes, uh, it's been a bit of an up and down week, but uh, uh, obviously yesterday it, um, with the news that uh, Leeds lost their match, Newcastle are officially safe. I think the week started a little bit on a downbeat note uh, with the defeat to Man City. I think we expected possibly yeah. City to beat uh, Newcastle. We weren't really, you know, I don't think there was, uh, you know, too many uh, uh, people didn't think that would happen. Obviously, with City, you know, going for the title, uh, the, the performance was slightly disappointing, or I should say, the, the scoreline was uh, slightly disappointing in the end. Uh, but I think that's just a short-term setback. I think in the overall picture, you know, um, City have been playing really, really well. They've done that to many teams, so I don't think that's anything to really worry about long-term. Absolutely. I think in the, far, far more important in the long term is that um, uh, you know. Safety has been confirmed. We knew, we, you know, it, it, we've known that for a few weeks now, really. Uh, but uh, now it's mathematically been confirmed. And that's great news because I think everyone can start looking forward to the new season, you know, whether it's um, um, about, you know, the, the new signings, um, you know, all the things that are going to happen uh, with, with the new owners, the new appointments. And um, this is why it's fantastic, uh, uh, you know, to, to have our guest today because, you know, we've, we've been talking a lot about not just on the field issues, but like uh, off the field and in the community as well uh, in, in Newcastle. So, um, so it's a pleasure to have today's guest. Uh, take it away, Pete. OK, so our common message this season is to promote how far our football club has come. Uh, today we celebrate how far our city has come in the presence of the Lord Mayor of Newcastle, a man with a very clear vision. Uh, it's a massive welcome to Lord Mayor Habib Rahman. How are you? Thank you very much. Can I start by greeting everybody with uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, khubastin, namaskar, sasriyakal. Um, delighted to be here. Um, Newcastle is a multi diverse and city of sanctuary, and we are proud of our uh, uh, a citizen who uh, uh, portray um, and promote the rich diversity um, you know we have representation of uh, people from all over the world hence my greetings in few languages only <laughs> brilliant stuff listen i've got to take you back because in 1985 that saw newcastle united back in division one dire straits have a u.s number one with money for nothing and you arrived in the tune age 12 now few would imagine just then how determined and, and the drive that you have that would lead you to making such monumental changes uh, to the city's rise and the fight against racism and hate crime it's been an epic journey hasn't it absolutely it has um it has indeed and uh, um, as with anything um moving house is uh, one thing but uh, uh, moving from one country to another um, and if you didn't have the language skills so uh, what a wonderful journey it was um uh, reflecting to uh, some of the incidents whether uh, bad incidents good and incidents those are fantastic memories um, and memories that you 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 cherish, and along the line, it was a tough journey. Um, you know, um, um, I don't, um, uh, to this day, I still can't conclude um, and agree whether uh, it was the weather to digest or everything else. You know, uh, coming from a, a country, my birthplace, Bangladesh, average temperature is about thirty degrees, yeah. and all of a sudden. I arrive in uh, in the tune um, in the late uh, 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 late eighty five um, October November and my yep. first memory was snow and you're like how do you adapt to that you know um, so no it's been a it's been a fantastic journey uh, uh, fantastic um, and I'm proud of. Uh, the city. Uh, I'm proud of uh, uh, all the contribution that I was able to make uh, to be where I am right at this moment. The city's first uh, 
uh, black Muslim Lord Mayor in its all entire history of 807 years. <laughs> Absolutely incredible when you think about it and you do that timeline um, all, all the way back. Ali, now, uh, as we've witnessed recently on the birth of this podcast, what a journey for us. I mean, we now have owners who are closer than ever to the city. Um, but how important is the power of football to convey every community message, which in, which in essence is trying to encapsulate and help uh, the work that Lord Mayor Roman is doing? I mean, I think, um, as you know, Pete, you, you know more than me, of course, it's your hometown. Newcastle, probably more than many other cities. I mean, football plays such a pivotal part in the community anyway. A football club is not just a football club. Uh, you know, it, it is a part of the community. It's, some, it's, uh, it's a place everyone, you know, sort of unites behind, you know. And that happens to be the case in Newcastle probably more than anywhere else. We've seen the changes that have happened since the takeover. You know, how it's, you know, it's galvanized the club, the players, and everyone like the fans the you know the fan base you know we keep hearing time and again how it's it's a different St James's Park is a different place to be in at, at the moment the city is a different place to be in you know everyone is buzzing you know so I think you know that's fantastic I think this is something that the new owners know and have really encouraged and you know have acknowledged time and time again you know so I think this is something that will increase like I said you know there's we we've talked about there's going to be appointments uh at board level, um, you know, definitely there's going to be a chief ex- executive at some point. And yeah. I think the, the, the interactions with the city, with the community will definitely increase. You know, we've heard about that there might be investments in the, in the surrounding community. I think that will happen, which, again, you know, is absolutely fantastic for the, for the city. Absolutely. Um, and before we get into that in, in a little bit more detail, just, just for our listeners, um, Lord Mayor Roman, you, you hinted at it. I mean, your journey... You started as a, it's gone from, that, that, that journey was Elzig, but it went from youth worker to counsellor, if I'm correct. That's right. Yeah, uh, 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 that, that's right. So uh, my initial uh, journey coming into um, investing or uh, shaping the city um, in uh, various way uh, was uh, to join the, uh, the, the uh, youth uh, youth work. Yeah. And my motivation behind that was really uh, um, I wanted to make, uh, 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 bring about changes, positive changes. I wanted to um, educate uh, uh, people of uh, some of the uh, horrible and tough um, experience that I um, um, unfortunately had to um, endure and go through in my initial stages of um, arriving here um, at this wonderful city. Um, and I uh, concluded um, a youth service working with young people if we can change the perception and the views of, uh, and opinion of young people who then will become the uh, the citizens and go on then we're, we're, we're in a winner um, you know um, and that was my uh, 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 motivation and perhaps because it's a football show uh, perhaps the other reason I ended up uh, becoming a youth worker. So my first, um, the only passion was I only wanted to be a football player. I was a <laughs> damn good football player. Uh, but unfortunately, um, as a man of colour in the um, 80s, the opportunities wasn't there um, as much as uh, 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 perhaps it is now. Uh, I remember having a conversation with John Beresford and I said to him, um, bro, I, I think I would have been a, a big uh, a competitor competing uh, uh, with you in the position, whether playing for the tune or uh, the national team, you know, um, and I've made references here and there that, um, you know, I'm, I, I, I was the best left back that England never had. Brilliant. So it, 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 it's, it's, it's how do you uh, progress and move on? Um, so I, I realized, unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, I, I couldn't uh, break into the, the, the football like hundreds and thousands and millions of people who, um, who don't have. Um, the next best thing was, um, you know, investing in youth. Um, and trying to uh, uh, educate, safeguard, protect uh, uh, the uh, the generation, that core generation, which changes and shapes how the future generations will be. So, um, you know, it's been a, a, a fabulous journey, fantastic journey. I'm proud of um, everything that I've done thus far. Amazing. Um, Ali, I want to touch on that. Um, Lord Mayor Roman says that. Now, elements of racism still occur, of course, um, 
you know, but some of the abuse that, that, that fans and players experienced in, in that era um, that Lord Mayor refers to have gradually faded, thankfully. Uh, but that's due to modernised stadiums and, of course, more respected players standing up and addressing uh, this, you know, inherent uh, problem that we've suffered, hasn't it? So, again, that message of footballers is, 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 is great as an educational tool, isn't it, Ali? Absolutely. I mean, in the late 70s and early 80s, I think there was, uh, I mean, obviously uh, there were, uh, you know, black players at least uh, before that. But, you know, like, uh, maybe, you know, English football was predominantly played by, you know, white uh, players. Uh, yeah. And there weren't opportunities for others. But like in the, in the late 80s, in the late 70s, you know, certainly Viv Anderson was the first player to play, a black player to play for England. And then, you know, people like John Barnes, Luther Blissett came through, um, you know, and, and obviously that increased uh, uh, throughout the 80s, we know, like, you know, uh, um, attitudes changed when, when someone like John Barnes moved to Liverpool, you know, that, that changed attitudes, you know, yeah. other players as well, you know, throughout the 80s, that increased. And then throughout the 90s, you know, I think the game became more multicultural. People came from all over Europe and other parts of the world. So, so it certainly, like, uh, you know, changed attitudes, opened minds and, you know, um, you know racism, w- as you say, part of like the cleanup of football, if you want, you know, like with with, with different stadiums, with uh, um, after Taylor report, and I, I think you know racism was driven out for the most part. But I think we all know that even now there is still sort of a, you know, there are still pockets of it. You know, maybe underlying racism. I, pe- I think people are not emboldened to show it like they did in the old days. You know, because the majority are. Are good, decent fans, you know, but, uh, you know, it, it still comes out once in a while, you know, and, you know, you know, the job's never done, you know, I, I think uh, with these things. Absolutely. Uh, with that in mind, uh, Lord Mayor Aman, I wanted to touch on show races on the red card, something that's featured heavily on our podcast uh, with, with friends and guests who you mentioned, John Beresford, and more recently, we've just had Shaka Hislop on, um, who I know you know very well. Uh, you've been involved with this movement since 1998, how have you seen it grow in that time? Oh, it's been um, it's been absolutely fantastic. Show race in the red card. <coughs> um, I, I might be biased towards uh, uh, the organisation. Is arguably uh, the most successful and biggest organisation uh, globally uh, combating uh, racism of all forms. Uh, you know, let's not uh, uh, get away from uh, that that, uh, that aspect. Um, and uh, it's been a uh, one hell of a journey how it, it's moved on. Uh, perhaps that's also a, a key indicator how we all have supported the organisation in so many different ways, whether uh, our funders, supporters coming in, helping shape the organisation, growing f- uh, uh, stronger and stronger, and perhaps how... Uh, those recipients and beneficiaries, whether they be primary schools, secondary schools, clubs, um, really taking on the message, which is we need to collectively work with this to eliminate racism from um, our terraces, our streets and our uh, stadiums. Um, and uh, uh, it, it, it's, it's proven to be a huge uh, success. And also, the flip side of the coin is um, in the 21st century, uh, 2022, uh, we shouldn't need organizations like Show Racism, the Red Card, to even exist. Mm. And that's a, a, a brutal reality, unfortunately. Uh, uh, but as mentioned uh, uh, by Ali and others would have uh, touched on, um, we are a lot better. Uh, and when I say we, we are saying cities, towns, boroughs, stadiums, terraces, we are a lot better than uh, what we were uh, 30, 40, 20 years ago. Yeah. But there's still a hell of a lot of work to be done. Um, Islamophobia does exist. It's real. Racism does exist. It's real. Um, uh, 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 but here in uh, Newcastle, we are black and white, like yeah. our uh, uh, color of the shirt. We do get uh, 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 come together and we are united when there is issues of inequalities, injustice or uh, 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 racism. And collectively, we come together and we find solution to deal with it. Um, you know, uh, there's there's a lot more to be done. Um, it is a, pro, uh, a process, 
um, and process are being followed and um, uh, 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 reassured uh, uh, and confident uh, that as and when there are uh, incidents and uh, 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 examples of discrimination, then we will be united to deal with that. And I've got to say as well, I mean, hopefully the longer that these institutions go on, and, and this is to, to, to both of you gentlemen, is that hopefully the cycle will be that the next set of football fans, they will grow up with a little more uh, knowledge uh, uh, about that and, 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 and their sons and their sons and their grandsons. And hopefully, as you say, this, this will continue. This cycle will continue until we're rid of it because this is why these groups have been formed and long may they continue. Ali, it is time for a little bit of football update and I wanted to come to you. What we've done on this podcast all the way along is we've featured other teams uh, that have been in and around the battle of, of, of relegation, which we no longer have to worry about anymore. But I just wanted to touch on one of them who have been in and they've been in action this week. And I've been looking at that drop zone and it's looking extremely dodgy for Leeds United, isn't it? Yeah, uh, Pete, I mean, I, th I think it's it's really ironic uh, to think that Newcastle's sort of journey to safety started with that win at Leeds um, just before the, the Newcastle's trip to Saudi Arabia. I think at the time, had we thought, you know, if anyone had, you know, had asked, you know, who do you think between those two clubs would stay up? I think most people would have thought Leeds and Newcastle were in, in a pretty bad position. And, and then came that win at Elland Road and everything changed. You know, that win, you know, with the John Joe Shelby's goal, I think the trajectories of both clubs since that day have been in opposite directions, you know, a real sliding doors moment, you know, and, uh, and they, they look really, really in trouble. I mean, at, at one point, I really thought Everton possibly m might be the team that uh, gets sucked into it. Um, but Leeds, they've got, uh, I mean, they, they've had pretty, uh, you know, bad defeats in the last two games. And both had, uh, in both matches, they've had players sent off. Uh, even their own fans are saying, you know, you know, I, one of my friends was a fan said, this is what, you know, giving up looks like, you know. Sure. And, you know, and you think where they need a point and they need Burnley, like Burnley or Everton to lose all their games, you know, and they need those points to come from somewhere. And it's hard to see what, what it's coming for. And it's such a shame. I mean, you know, I guess to fans of any club, it's a shame, of course. But, yeah. uh, you know, I think Leeds have done so well over the last few years to come up. They worked up, you know, so hard a, to get back, didn't they? They worked so hard to get back in there. I'm a massive fan of uh, uh, Marcelo Bielsa, obviously, who was let go. Maybe this is proof that it wasn't all on him, you know, that there were issues at the club. Uh, and it just hasn't worked out with them, uh, uh, with the new manager, Marsh. And it is, it is a massive shame, but, you know, it's a massive shame, but it, it's going to be a massive shame to one of those clubs. And at the moment, it's looking like it's Leeds. Absolutely. Now, one club it doesn't affect is us. So, Lord Mayor Roman, I've got to say, um, let's look at our city. Everyone, including you, the Lord Mayor, must have an absolute spring in their step with the feel-good factor that's been brought to the club, both on and off the pitch. Absolutely. And I think, uh, 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 firstly, uh, personally, I welcome this um, takeover. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, and um, I would uh, I uh, uh, welcome uh, the current investors, the owners, um, even the custodian of our city with open arms here. Um, and um, I look forward to uh, meeting uh, the owners at some point. I think one of the master stroke that they did um, initially coming in was to appoint Eddie Howe. Now, um, often when you have uh, an injection into uh, a, a sporting club uh, where wealth is not an issue uh, or funds is not an issue, you tend to make a mistake by uh, uh, having a, a, a huge expectation. I think the realization was the challenge should be uh, retaining the position in the Premier League. And Eddie Howe is an excellent young uh, uh, manager. He's proven. Um, I've had the opportunity to meet him a couple of times. Um, um, and the last conversation, we had a very good conversation. Um, it was um, he uh, wanted to get the best out of the squad that he's got. Um, we, we've got a decent squad. We did yeah. have a decent squad. And uh, the acquisition of few players is just uh, rejuvenated everyone. 
Um, and uh, the name of the game was Survival. And as soon as I realized it was Eddie Howe, I did not have, for one split second, did I think we were going down. No, we weren't. We were staying up. And that's how confident many of us was. So the transition is fantastic. And I think um, I, I'm, a, uh, um, I, I'm not expecting, I'm not going to have a huge expectation. All I want to see is next year, we progress on that steady progression going forward. And I would love it if Eddie Howe is the man behind that. Um, and we see uh, how uh, uh, slow progress uh, uh, we make. And it's, it's absolutely fantastic to see um, how uh, we as a city, not just football wise, um, uh, with this huge injection um, uh, uh, um, uh, coming in, we uh, go forward tackling so many different other uh, issues. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. And I think that it, it, what you've said goes for a lot of people in the Northeast who, who support Newcastle and around the world that would say, we hope that Eddie Howe is that man that brings <laughs> success. And interestingly enough, a few weeks back, we spoke with Gavin Peacock, who was talking about in his time how Kevin Keegan it's the similarities that, you know, Keegan arrived and of course he played there originally, but he got it. He understood it. And there's very similar uh, traits with Eddie Howe. He, he understands the area. He made a big, big deal about how he was moving straight uh, to the area with his family. All of the things that you say, yeah, it's the right things to say, but he did them and it's benefited um, the club. So Ali, it's been a difficult run of fixtures of late. Um, and it's not set to change because Arsenal are up next um, and they're vying for that top four space with all of the clubs around them. Uh, Gunners up next. It, it could be that Newcastle, maybe they don't win again this season, but with being safe, um, as Lord Mayor Oman says, I think it's about looking to next season and the build. Yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I don't look too much into the results at the moment. Like I said, possibly scoreline against... Uh... Manchester City was a little bit disappointing, you know, because, yeah. you know, you know, you know, they had short periods of decent play. But, you know, so maybe five nil was a little bit harsh. Uh, and I mean, obviously, you don't want to have too many like heavy defeats, you know, but at any point. Eddie Howe certainly, you know, like is is the ultimate professional. I wouldn't want that anyway. But in terms of results and end of season, I, I wouldn't hold too much. Uh, too much on the results. Obviously, playing Liverpool, it was only one nil, uh, and then you know the, the heavy defeat against. You City. were lucky, Ali. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I always get that in. <laughs> and, so, and you, re- you remain so you remain so gentlemanly about it as well. But you, you, you're, you're right; it was it was a, a, on another day it could have been three or four. And I think, that, as you say, there's no disgrace because Man City. I don't, I don't think there's any disgrace. Four and and five. Even, yeah, and in, even this coming game against Arsenal, if you remember, if you look back a uh, few weeks uh, when um, uh, Newcastle had lost to Everton and Chelsea, I, I think, yeah. uh, no, I think it was Everton and, yeah, I think it was Everton and Chelsea, Chelsea. In, consec- in consecutive games, and Tottenham were up next, and, you know, we were, we were you know, at, obviously at the time, there was still, you know, safety wasn't guaranteed, and we were thinking, you know, this is a tough one, you know, they had that run of away games, and that was the last of those away games, and I, and I remember saying that, even if should, should the game go against uh, Newcastle, you know, which it did, you know, they lost 5-1. This was not a time to panic, you know. They, you know, it, it's, uh, th- these things should be expected. You know, we shouldn't expect miracles from the club. And, um, and they did lose 5-1, but came back really strongly and won the next three games, which all but guaranteed safety, you know. So I think, uh, I think that there's going to be ups and downs as expected. I don't think, you know, uh, anyone expect, you know, expected Newcastle to, to beat Man City, really, you know. And, uh, and you know, you've got the game coming up against Arsenal. Arsenal still have a lot to play for Big while time. Newcastle does. So, yeah, so, uh, so yeah, I, I, you know, unfortunately, I, I probably don't, can't see Newcastle winning that one. Uh, but again, I, I think it's like, it's almost the end of the season. It's time to take stock, just get to the end of the season and rebuild and for plan, next season. And rebuild. And plan. plan um, it, it's, it's, it's fascinating, this bullet. Lord Mayor Aman, the likes of yourself and Chiyong Wura MP, you work tirelessly for the city and you've achieved so much. Um, but in the legacy stakes, what would you get? What would you say and what, what, what do you think? What would you like to be remembered for your greatest achievement? What would give you the most pride for your city? Um, I think it's the ongoing uh, um, effort um, and the continuation. Uh, there's never a end of any target um, and I'll use show racing the red card as an example uh, there is no end to uh, what we do it's what we 
continuously do to promote the city in every aspect to ensure uh, support uh, and systems are in place for every generations to uh, receive the best of opportunity um, and uh, uh, for us collectively to eliminate. Um, and thus far, um, I surely uh, uh, truly hope um, and in reflection, people will uh, look at me and uh, say uh, some of my work that I've done within the community to uh, 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 really make a, a change to everybody's lives, whether it be from a, a, a campaigning for uh, social justice and uh, the rights of everyone uh, to supporting young people. Those um, are uh, things that I'd, I'd really want to be remembered. And of course, the current uh, a historical uh, fact that will forever remain in my name, uh, the first person of color, the first Muslim to uh, break the uh, uh, glass ceiling and become uh, the Lord Mayor of this wonderful city, that really paves the way and opportunities for uh, uh, people of uh, color and people of diverse background uh, to uh, uh, look at and say, you know what, um, I could also do that. And I say to any uh, man, woman, boy, girl of any ethnicity, any religion, any color, yes, you can. Anyone can, so long as you uh, put the work um, and, and the intention and uh, work at it. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. Amazing. Um, can't let you go without getting a little prediction from you for this Arsenal game. Come on, what's your thoughts? What's going to happen? Newcastle Arsenal will put you on the spot. Okay, a couple of different takes. Um, I've managed a football team. So on those bases, uh, what I'd like to see Eddie Howe do is giving those players who haven't had the chance to play um, an opportunity um, to come out on the last game. And perhaps in that I'm saying uh, we will lose. But on the, as a fan, when I'm at the terraces, we always want to win. We'll yeah. never agree with the manager. So uh, I'm... Uh, um, taking defeat graciously here uh, because um, as Ali just uh, uh, put it forward, there's so much for Arsenal um, in terms of how high flying they, they're going. And you know what? The, the result on Monday will not bother me to the slightest at all. It's all about learning and experiencing. Fantastic. Um, last word as always goes to you, AK. Um, and of course, we require your now famous prediction from, <laughs> from you. Well, yeah, I think uh, I think the Lord Mayor said said it all there, you know. Um, and really good point. I think it's time for Newcastle maybe to enjoy the the last game, the last home game of the yeah. season. You know, there should be a bit of a party atmosphere as well. But I think you know it's last home game of the season for Newcastle. I think Eddie Howe will probably want to give a few players, um, you know, a run out as well. But at the same time, he would want a result as well. He'd want to go out on a high. I think. Um, I, I, don't think Newcastle will win, but uh, I'm going to go for a Newcastle one, Arsenal one. OK, I'm going to take the same. I'm going to take a score draw. What I have been thinking about throughout this episode <laughs> is Lord Mayor Roman said that he was a good fo footballer. And my mind's been turning about this, how we can make this dream a reality. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get on to the boys, the guests that have been on this show. I'm going to speak to Lee Clark. I'm going to speak to Robbie Elliott. We're going to speak uh, to these guys and let's see if if we can get an entertainer's exhibition match to be played and Lord Mayor Rahman comes in at left back. I mean, I can't do any more than say, let's make this happen. Um, that, yeah. that would be my dream. Um, all that remains for me to do is, is, is thank you, Lord Mayor Rahman, for taking the time uh, to be on our podcast today. It's a, it's a pleasure. And I like the sound of that for me to turn up at uh, uh, St. James or anywhere for that matter to be with those, uh, with those guys. No, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, and, uh, you know, it's a greatest honor to represent this wonderful city. Um, and on a finishing note, um, as a, 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 a devout Muslim, whether you're a believer of a faith or a non-believer, um, I'll finish and conclude and say, may uh, uh, God Almighty bless us all and give us the mind and the heart to see every individual as human beings um, and may we continuously be uh, united to deal with the global issues that we face. Um, thank you very much for having me. Um, and I'll look forward to that game. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, that's it for another episode. 
um, of black and white with Arab news from him, Ali Khaled, me, Jordy, Pete Redding. We'll see you next week. It's Howie the Lads.